Within this old house live two residents. One of them is John Russell, composer, professor. The other has been dead for over 70 years. Hey y'all, welcome back to Gobi Church. I am Pastor Shane, and we're thrilled to have you with us for another deep dive in what horror movies can teach us about our religion. Now this week, we're gonna explore the 1980 classic horror film, The Changeling. Now this one was suggested a couple of times over at the Gobi Church Talk community group, and you can find that link in the description below. And to be honest, I didn't have very high hopes for this one, but I can admit that I undersold the potential that this film had to teach us important lessons about our progressive Christian faith. And I know that this is a horror film, especially from the 1980s, so it does require some suspension of belief. But can we just talk about how much you actually have to turn your brain off for this scene? All right, let's move on. Anyway, The Changeling centers around John Russell, a man grappling with intense grief after losing his wife and child. He moves into an old mansion, hoping for a fresh start because that always works out in these movies. But instead, he uncovers some seriously spooky secrets about the house's past, including the ghost of a murdered child. Now, that alone sounds pretty intense, right? But beyond the chills and thrills, this film offers some profound material for reflection, especially around grief, justice, and the persistence of the past. So let's journey through five key themes from the movie and see how they connect with our faith journey. Let's get into it. First up, grief, trauma, and healing. John is dealing with deep personal grief, much like the ghost haunting the house carries unresolved pain. It's a powerful parallel to how we experience and heal from trauma, both spiritually and emotionally. Think about it. How does this film show the impact of unresolved grief on both John and the ghost? It's like looking into a mirror reflecting real life experiences of trauma. John's grief mirrors the ghost child's unresolved pain, creating a haunting connection, <laughs> see what I did there, between the living and the dead. This raises an important question. How can our Christian communities offer healing and restoration in such cases? Well, at Go Be Church, we believe in walking alongside each other through the grief. We do this by offering grace and a listening ear, shooting off a text message, engaging in the comments when somebody's expressed a grief or a hurt. It's about creating space where healing can happen together. Now, the United Methodist focus on grace and community can help us navigate overwhelming grief like this, just like John's journey shows us the importance of not walking alone through our darkest times. By sharing our stories and supporting one another, we can help each other move toward healing and restoration. Next, let's talk about justice for the oppressed and the forgotten. The ghost of the murdered child represents those whose stories have been hidden or silenced, and this aligns beautifully with our commitment to seeking justice for the marginalized. The Changeling highlights the need for justice for those silenced and forgotten, and it echoes the biblical call to seek justice for those who have been pushed to the margins. The ghost's demand for justice makes us wonder, how do we balance seeking retribution and restorative justice in our own theology? As progressive Christians, we're called to seek justice in a way that restores and heals rather than simply punishes. And this means advocating for the voiceless and ensuring that their stories are heard and honored. It's about creating systems and communities where everyone feels seen and valued and where justice leads to reconciliation and healing for all parties involved. Moreover, the film challenges us to advocate for the vulnerable, both in society and within the church. As a Methodist community, we at Gobi Church are called to actively engage in justice work. We're called to make sure that no one is overlooked or wrong. It's about making our voices heard for those who can't speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, the power of the past. Can we ever escape it? The Haunted Mansion symbolizes how past sins and unresolved evils can linger and affect the present. The Changeling shows that past sins, if unacknowledged, can haunt the present. There's so many good puns to be had in this movie. This mirrors the Christian idea of sin and repentance. It makes us ask, how can we address past wrongs, whether personal, societal, or spiritual, to bring healing and reconciliation? Addressing past wrongs involves honest reflection and a willingness to confront uncomfortable truths. In our community, this means engaging in conversations about forgiveness, seeking reconciliation where there has been hurt, and working to dismantle systemic injustices. It's about creating a culture of transparency and accountability where healing can begin by acknowledging and addressing the past. Ignoring truth or burying sin leads to continued harm, much like the haunting in this film. And this challenges us to seek repentance both personally and communally to open the door to true healing and transformation. Now let's dive into vengeance, forgiveness, and divine justice. The ghost's quest for vengeance raises some tough questions about how we respond to injustice. In the film, the desire for vengeance is palpable, and it made me wonder, is the ghost's vengeance justified? Now, Christian theology, especially from a Methodist perspective, emphasizes forgiveness and reconciliation over vengeance. And this offers a different response to the injustice than what we see in the film, one that prioritizes healing rather than retribution. While the ghost's desire for vengeance stems from deep hurt and injustice, our faith calls us to respond with forgiveness and a desire for restoration. This doesn't mean ignoring wrongdoing, as I've said a million times, but it does mean seeking a path that heals all involved. Divine justice, as progressive Christians understand it anyway, seeks to restore relationships and bring about healing rather than simply punishing the wrongdoer. It's a delicate balance, but one that needs to be dealt with, especially in our current day. Ultimately, it's a balance that leads to a deeper healing and restoration within ourselves and our faith. Finally, let's explore the presence of evil and the role of the sacred. The changeling portrays evil not just as supernatural forces, but as stemming from human actions, the murder and the cover-up of that murder of a child. So why even ask how the film depicts evil? Well, it encourages us to see evil as arising from injustice and moral corruption, which actually aligns with our Christian understanding of sin and evil. The film suggests that evil often has very human origins. Greed, fear, and the desire to hide truth can all lead to horrific actions. And this tracks with our understanding that evil is not just a distant, abstract force, but something that arises from our choices and actions. Recognizing this empowers us to confront and combat that evil by addressing its root causes, promoting justice, compassion, and integrity in our communities in the process. A Methodist understanding of God's grace here emphasizes healing and transformation, and it offers hope in the face of such evil and suffering. By recognizing that evil often stems from our own actions, we're empowered to confront it and combat it, both individually and collectively, with the grace and transformation that God offers. Now, before we wrap this up, I want to touch on a couple more points. First, ghosts as symbols of unresolved pain. The ghost in The Changeling symbolizes unresolved grief and trauma, and this connects deeply with our Christian call to heal the brokenhearted and bring closure to those who suffer. It's a reminder that addressing our pain is essential for true healing. Just as the ghost's unrest stems from unresolved pain, we too must face our grief and trauma head on. Our faith encourages us to seek support within our community, pray for strength, and lean on God's promises of healing and restoration. By doing so, we can help each other find peace and move forward. I also want to touch on the ethics of revenge versus restoration, which I kind of talked about before, but the ghost's revenge contrasts sharply with our ethic of forgiveness and restoration. How do we navigate the demand for justice while holding on to grace-filled forgiveness? It's a complex dance, but one that our faith helps us navigate with love and compassion. 
Navigating justice and forgiveness means striving for a balance where we hold perpetrators accountable while also extending grace. It involves advocating for systemic changes to prevent future injustices while also supporting those who have been wronged in their journey toward healing. Our faith teaches us that true justice seeks both accountability and restoration, and it encourages healthier, more compassionate communities to thrive. These themes from The Changeling remind us of our call to respond to suffering, evil, and injustice with love, grace, and a commitment to restorative justice. It's a great reminder of how our faith can engage deeply with the stories that challenge us. Thanks for joining us again on this spooky and fun journey through The Changeling. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our weekly reflections and discussions. And hey, drop a comment below. What movie should we explore next? Don't forget to go be Jesus to someone else this week, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, y'all.